Hey, what's up? David Cohen here from Learn Now Effect, and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this metallic flaming text inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look. So I'm working in 1920 by 1080 Full HD. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Fusion Comp. Right-click on the Media Pool, New Fusion Composition, and I'm going to make it five seconds long. And I'm going to drag it onto the timeline. Make sure that your Fusion Clip is selected and the playhead is over the clip, and we can head on over to Fusion. Now that we're in our Fusion tab, I'm going to take my Media Out node and drag it to the corner, zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to take a Text Plus tool, and I'm going to write our text. And I'm going to send the text to the viewer. So I'm going to scale this up. And I'm going to change the font. It's a really cool font called Astrolab. And I want it to be so big that it's just barely coming out, that it isn't coming out of the frame. Like this, make it a little bit smaller, actually. So I have to change the center a little bit because it isn't perfectly aligned. But I want to make it as large as possible without coming out of the border. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shading tab and I'm going to change the type from solid to gradient. And I'm going to take this white point and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I don't want it to be so bright. And now I'm going to search for a brightness contrast. And I'm going to grab a fuse called hexagon tiles. You can get this for free on Reactor. I'm going to send the hexagon tiles to the viewer and I'm going to set color one to black and color of the border to white. And I'm going to bring the size to 120, 130. So if we zoom in on this, we see we have a very nice hexagon tile and we're going to use this to create sort of embossed effect on our text. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a bitmap. And I'm going to pipe the output of the hexagon tiles into the bitmap. And I'm going to send the bitmap to the viewer. And the whole thing is white because we have it set to alpha. And there is no alpha channel in the hexagon tiles. So I'm going to set it to luminance. And now we have a luminance mask. So I'm going to pipe this mask into our brightness contrast. And I'm going to look at it in the viewer. And if we bring down the gamma in the brightness contrast, we're only going to affect the area inside the hexagon. So it looks like this. Looks pretty good, but our border is very hard to see, very hard to define. Even if I turn off the checkered underlay, it's still not a very defined border. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a filter. And I'm going to bring it down here because this is already a different layer. I'm going to pipe the text into the filter. And I'm going to set the filter to Sobel. It's a very good edge detection method. It's my favorite way of doing it. And I'm going to search for a road dilate. And I'm going to bring the amount higher. So I'm going to uncheck high quality for this because this is going to make it a lot quicker. And we have a pretty thick border. That's nice. And I'm going to leave it as it is. I can actually bring this filter and the road dilate down right here and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a background and i'm going to pipe this road dilate into the mask input of the background since the background is black we aren't going to see anything so i want to change the color to gray like this so now i'm going to merge these two together and if we look at it in the viewer, now we have a defined border, as you can see. This is actually very nice. This is the result we're going for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the depth to create our metallic effect. And I'm going to change the depth to float 32 and set the dealer to air diffusion. I'll bring this down here. And now here's the here comes the part where things get a little bit slow. I'm going to search for a scale, and this is going to help us get rid of our aliasing later. I'll explain what this means. So I'll set this scale to 2, so we get double resolution. We're going to get 4K now. 
now let's read 40 by 260 and float 32 and here's our text now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the filter to this not really exactly sure how you pronounce it but that's what I want to set it to and I am going to search for another filter So this filter, we're going to leave it at relief, and I'm going to bring the power up like that. And I want to play with the angle a little bit, like that. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to use the scale as a mask for the filter. Now we have it cutting out our edge. So it looks pretty good, and I'm going to leave it as it is right now. And I'm going to search for create bump map and I'm going to create a bump map with this so I'm going to bring the height scale up bring the texture to float 32 bring the height to 5 you can play with this clamsy normal a little bit to get some different results but I'm going to leave it as it is so we have a little bit of aliasing here but it's all going to go away once we scale it back down to our resolution so I'm going to use the scale as a mask for the create bump map and I'm going to use Captain LeBuck's technique right now. This is from Pirates of Confusion. And I'm going to search for channel booleans. And I'm going to set the red to black, the green to black, and the blue to black. And I don't really need to have this in the viewer at all even. So. I'm going to go to the auxiliary channels and I'm going to enable extra channels. So for the X normal, I'm going to select red background, for the Y normal, green background, and for the Z normal, blue background. So even if I look at this in the viewer right now, it's going to be completely black because only what we're doing, we're modifying our normals channels and not our RGB channels. So to affect our RGB channels, we're going to need a shader tool. And this is what I was saying, that this is the whole, from the bump map until the shader, this is all Captain LeBuck's method. As you can see, it's already looking metallic, like real metal. So, this is what it looks like, and once we scale it down to our original resolution, it's going to look much better. So I'm going to bring the specular down, not by that much, it takes a while to load actually. So here's our metal, and I'm going to scale it down with another scale. And this scale I'm going to set to 0.5 to get it back to our original resolution. Oh, sorry, I meant 0.5. So here's our original resolution, and as you can see, it looks much better, especially if we turn high quality back on. And in the scale, I'm going to set the filter back to this to make it work even better. All right. Now let's use a transform node because we don't need the text to be so large anymore. So I'm going to leave the canvas size the same, but I'm just going to make the text smaller. So I think this size is pretty good. And we still have our alpha channel to work with. So I'm going to save this image so we don't have to render this on every frame. So I'm just going to right click and save image. And I'm going to call this text.jpg. You always have to write the file extension. You have other file types here. By default, it chooses FusePeak, which isn't very useful. You have OpenEXR, but you have Targa. But I think we should use PNG for this one, actually, because we want to preserve our alpha channel. So we want to preserve our alpha channel. So I'm just going to save this. And I'm going to grab the file. And I'm going to grab it onto our timeline, onto our flow. So let's look at it here in the viewer. So it's exactly the same, as you can see, pretty high quality. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of this original text, Control C or Command C if you're on Mac, and I'm going to paste it here. Now I want to merge these two together. And I want to make this text the same size as our new image. So I'm just going to change the center a little bit. I want it to be exactly the same. 
because I don't want to have to render this PNG for the bitmap as the part for the particles. I want it to be quick, so I'm going to use this text. All right, so there's our text, and we can get rid of this merge now. And I'm going to go to the text shading properties, and I'm going to set it back to solid because the gradient takes more time to render. And we're going to be working on the particle system right now. So I'm going to grab a particle emitter from the toolbar and a particle render, p emitter, p render. And I'm going to set the p render to 2D. And in the particle emitter, I'm going to go to the region tab and I'm going to set the region to bitmap. And for the bitmap, I'm going to use the text. So I'm going to pipe that in here. And I'm going to look at our particle render. And the particles aren't doing anything right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add P directional force. And I'm going to go to the direction here and set it to 90 instead of minus 90. That way they're going to be going up instead of down. And I'm going to go to the probability tab and set this to 0.5. That's good. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for P-Turbulence. And I'm going to type it in here between the directional force and the render. You hold down Shift on your keyboard if you want to hover your node over for it to be in it. Because if I don't hold Shift, you have to hold Shift to take it out too. I just put it here. It's not even going to connect. As you can see, it's not connected. But if you hold down Shift, it's going to create this little highlight here. And it's going to put your node in between the other two. So in the P-Turbulence, I'm going to take the density to about 40. The X-Strength I'm going to bring up quite a bit. Y-Strength a little bit. And the Z-Strength somewhere between the X and the Y. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to reseed this random seed value here. And this looks pretty good. And to see this, you're going to need to turn off the checkered underlay. So another thing I need to do is I need to go to the P emitter here and bring the lifespan down probably to about 25. So it doesn't go out of the frame that much. I want the particles to stay in the frame. And I want to bring the number from 10 to 1000. That's pretty good. And as you can see, it's looking a little bit like fire. It's, it's behaving like fire, but it doesn't look like fire yet. That's what the next step is for. Now I'm going to make it look like fire. So I'm going to search for blur. And I'm going to blur it by probably about 7 pixels. So you can hardly see it right now. And I'm going to search for soft glow. Because fast Xbox glow takes too long to render with so long, with so much particles. I would have used it, but it, of course the results are much better with fast Xbox glow. Uh, with uh, X glow, sorry. So I'm going to look at this. Fast Expo glow is also good. And this looks pretty good, but it isn't very realistic. It just looks like a whole bunch of blobs. So to make it look realistic, I'm going to search for abstraction. And I'm just going to bring it down here. It takes a while to, to load. It's a pretty slow node. All right. And right off the bat, it doesn't look like fire. It looks like some sort of cloth. So I'm just going to bring the edge strength down. And I'm going to bring the abstraction strength down as well. Not to zero, but something like this. So if we play this, it looks a little bit more like fire. The shape looks more like fire the way it builds so it takes a while to load i need to turn off high quality for it to play faster yeah so there's our fire it looks very very realistic so now we have to add color to this so I'm going to use our fused intensity and you can get this for free on reactor or on our website. So I'm going to take the color and set it to an orange like that. 
bring the vibrance mode to power because that's what works best for fire like elements and I'm going to bring the vibrance up and I'm going to bring the post gain up and I'm going to bring the post gamma down so this doesn't look very realistic at the moment but I want to bring the gain down a little like that and let's try bring the gamma down more So it's look it's getting there. Might want to bring it a little bit closer to red. To give it like a hotter fire look. So now we're going to work on blending this with our image. So I'm going to go and grab our image that we pre-rendered. I'm going to merge it on top. And as you can see, this sort of blows out the text. So I'm going to add a color corrector to this from the toolbar. And I'm going to bring the gain down to give it like sort of a deep look. And I'm going to bring the gamma down just a bit. And this looks pretty good. Also takes a while to render, but once it renders the first time, it plays back pretty quickly. All right, so we can play with this intensity a little bit more. We can bring the gain. Yeah, not that high, of course, but we can play around with this. Another thing we can do, we can go back to the abstraction and what, see what happens if we bring the blur size down to 5. We get much more detail in our fire. So if I bring it to 3, oh, that's a very, very scary fire. So let's try 4.5. So that's a pretty good size and it looks good. So when we bring it back to our text, it looks more realistic right now. So now that we're done blending our text with our fire, we need one more thing to make it look more realistic, and that's heat distortion. And of course, you can use my friend Emilio Sapia's heat distortion macro, which you can get for free on Reactor. There's also an optional donation if you're if you want. So this heat distortion plugin works very well, but I want to show you guys how to make it in a procedural way, like like from scratch. So I'm going to take this fast noise from the toolbar, and I'm going bring the scale up like this and I'm going to create yet another bump map and I'm going to bring the height scale up like this and this is actually very too much detail for heat distortion so this looks good and in the fast noise I'm going to bring the seeth rate up and I'm just going to randomize the seeth here and I'm going to add an expression to the center so this is the x expression, this is point, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, this is x, and this is y. I want to modify the y value. So for y, I'm going to type time divided by 77. Let's leave it at that. And let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so I have a very nice slow heat rising. So that looks pretty good. And Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for this place. And I'm not even going to change anything in the displace. Because by default, it displaces just ever so slightly, as you can see. And that just very realistic effect, in my opinion. So I don't want to even change anything in it. So this adds sort of a 3D. It lets you... Because the displace only lets you displace in the X and Y directions, and this sort of gives you some depth to the bump map. I could have just piped this in directly, but it wouldn't have the same effect. So I'm going to take a copy of this fast noise, Control C and Control V, and I am going to change the seeth completely. I'm going to just randomize it a little bit, and I want the speed to remain about the same because you know it's supposed to be in sync with the distortion. And I'm going to add a brightness contrast. And this is solely for the effect of a mask. We're not going to be creating a pattern like this or anything. We're just going to clip the blacks and the whites. Mostly the blacks. Control S to save your work. So I'm going to clip it like this to create a very interesting mask. And I'm going to search for a depth blur. And this is basically exactly the same thing that's going on inside of Emilio's macro. I just wanted to show you guys how to do this from scratch. 
and I'm just going to pipe this in here to the depth blur. And the depth blur is set to channel Z, and we don't have a Z channel because we didn't render 3D scene or we don't have an EXR sequence with a Z channel. So we're going to be using the loom channel. And I want to set the filter to soften, and I want to bring the blur size up. Not that high. So we have these sort of patches of blur going on. As you can see, we have these like sort of patches. A little bit of blur here, a little bit there. So I can clip the white a little bit as well, just to show you what, what happens. So if you change this, the depth of blur changes. And we have like patches of blur here and there. So that's a pretty interesting heat distortion effect. I learned this from Emilio himself. Actually, he made a tutorial. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Because this actually blends very well with our fire. So this is basically our fire text. And you can do a little bit more color correction. You can add some grain if you're interested. So I'm going to grab our media out node. And see this whole node tree? This is just in case you want to change the text. You want to add something else like you can write you can go back to this text here and you can write flame and it'll update here you just need to make this text smaller actually so if you go back here you'll see what's going on with your text it's going to update and you'll have a flame text now and of course you're going to need to scale this again and you just pipe it in here and it will work so if you just pipe all of this oh, sorry, into the media out, sorry, my mouse is on the fritz today. Yeah. If you pipe this depth blur into the media out, it'll become available on the edit tab and the render tab. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share with your friends. Until next time, I'm David Cohen, this is Lornell Fakes, and I'll see you next week.